Good morning, students. In the previous class, I have explained the various terms which are used to describe the shapes of the corolla. And in the previous videos, I have explained the parts of the flower up to corolla. Okay. Now you have learnt. most of the terminologies which are used to describe the calyx and corolla of the flower and also the supporting views or supporting features regarding the flower is a modified shoot today i am going to continue with the essential goals of the flower that is the endrasium and the gynasium so essential whorls of the flower means they are the compulsory whorls of the flower because we define the flower as a reproductive shoot or it is a reproductive part of an angiospermic plant which is meant for sexual reproduction and you know that the flower is made up of two different types of whorls the non essential whorls or accessory whorls and essential whorls calyx corolla are under the first category non essential whorls or accessory whorls meaning is even if they are not there in a flower the flower will take on the process of reproduction no they are not the compulsory in other words we can say that they are not the compulsory parts to be present in a flower whereas the compulsory parts of the flower because it is meant for sexual reproduction there are two whorls in the whorls of the flower the endrasium and the gynasium we so today i am going to begin with the endrasium and the various uh, features of this endrasium okay so let us begin with endrasium endrasium is made up of it is a whorl actually and this whorl of the flower is the male reproductive part of the flower okay the male reproductive part of the flowers are called as the whorl is called as endrasium and the endrasium is made up of individual units called as the stamens stamens are the what are the stamens are the so they are the units of endrasium okay the stamens are the units of endrasium so stamen i will not explain the stamen and its structure in detail again because you have already studied the stamen what is meant by the stamen what are the different parts of the stamen and how the stamen is going to develop that is the uh, morphogenesis part in the embryology part third semester of your uh, botany syllabus you have studied the embryology in which you have studied how the stamen is going to develop from anther primordium to mature anther you know what are the different parts of a mature anther and all the things you know and this is the main reproductive structure and the stamens are going to produce the spores they are called as the microspores or the pollens or they can be also called as pollens okay they are going to be produced from the stamens but briefly to recapture the structure of the stamen you you have studied the stamen earlier the stamen is made up of two different parts okay the basal stalk like portion is called as the filament and the functional part is called as an anther okay these are the two parts of the stamen the filament is a supporting part of the stamen and the functional part which is capable of producing the microspores or the pollen grains is called as an anther so this anther is generally generally the anther is made up of two cells two celled anther is called as this is an example for two celled anther one and two so in that case it is called as dicyclic anther okay dicyclic anther here di refers to two theca refers to chamber okay cells or chamber so when the cell there are two number of cells in an anther then it is to be described as dicyclic kind of anther 
and this is a common feature in most of the angiosperms. You can quote the example of brinjal, tomato, chili, datura, cesarpinia, mustard. So all these are examples for the dicacus kind of anther. And if the anther is made up of only one cell, if it is one cell, single cell, in that case it is to be called as monothecus. The word itself gives the meaning mono single and the theca chamber. If the anther is made up of only one chamber, then it is to be called as monothecus type of anther. And this is specifically very specially found in the members of family Malvaceae. Malvaceae is represented by hibiscus, lady's finger, cotton. They are the members of Malvaceae family. And in this case, you are going to, you might have seen the hibiscus stamens. The stamen appears like this. Each stamen. It is having kidney like you will come to know the further features of the stamen, the further part of study of fibrosis. So this is one cell anther. This is made up of only one cell. So such kind of anthers are called as monothecus type of anthers and it is found in the family Malvaceae. For this, you can quote any other examples like Cisalpinia, Mustard, Incarosia, Mango, Cashew, because maximum number of flowering plants belong to this category. They are characterized by two cell anther. Okay? So monothecus means one cell anther. Exclusive character or very special feature of the members which belong to family Malvaceae. Diathecus is of general occurrence where the stamen is made up of two cells. Okay? So this is the monothecus anther diagram which shows the monothecus stamen. Then, the anthers of if the when the cells are in two numbers or if the stamen or anther is made up of two cells, the two cells, if you uh, turn the anther on the ventral side, So now ventral and dorsal side, I will tell you what, what which surface becomes the, the ventral surface and which becomes the dorsal surface because you have studied uh, in the terminologies that uh, dorsal is system on back side of the anther and all. So that ventral surface means in a flower, suppose if this is the innermost part of the flower that is called as gynation. Okay. Now I will draw the stamen, one stamen. Okay. And in this case, the surface of the anther which is facing the style and stigma or which is facing the ovary, that surface is ventral surface of the anther. Okay? The surface of the anther, suppose if this is the anther surface and inside that you find the gynaceum, this surface becomes the ventral surface. And the surface which is going to face the petals, after this comes the petal here. So the surface which is going to face the petal, the petal, okay, the outer surface which is going to face the petal is called as the dorsal surface or back side of the anther, okay. Now, on the ventral and the dorsal surface of the stem, if you turn the stem upside down, so here you will be able to make out, so this is one surface, this is the surface facing the ovary, this is ventral surface, on the dorsal surface, this is the dorsal side, this is the ventral side. You will find a connecting kind of patch of tissue. This you know. It is called as connective. There is a smooth patch of tissue which runs along the height of the anchor. And it is going to cement the two lobes of the anchor. It is going to connect the two lobes of the anchor together. And the tissue is called as connective. Okay. This part is of course called as the filament. Okay? Now, each lobe of the anther is further divided into chambers. Again, they are two sided in nature. So that, when you take a section of diacritus kind of anther, the section comes like this. Okay? This is the TS of mature anther. Where you will get, this is one anther lobe and this is the second anther lobe. Each anther lobe is made up of, okay, this is one lobe of the anther. Each anther lobe is made up of two sacs and these two sacs are called as microsporangia. Microsporangium is a singular, microsporangia is plural. So that each diathecus anther is characterized by the presence of four chambers and there are four microsporangia. 
sporangia in each angle. And each microsporangium inside contains the microspore mother cells. Okay, this is the sac. And inside it contains the microspore mother cells. The microspore mother cells on meiosis, they are going to produce the actual reproductive part, the main reproductive part of the flower. They are called as colons or they are called as microspores. We need not go deep into the features of these uh, changes which are going to take place in the anthem because it is already, uh, you have already studied the same thing in the third semester. Okay? Now, the microsporangia are present in the anthem and the microsporangia produces the polar grains. Okay? Now, these are the different parts of the stem. Right? Suppose, common feature of the flowers is the stamen is supported by this kind of supporting part that is called as the filament. Suppose if this filament is absent, in that case also, just uh, the stamen appears like this, just blunt. This is the anthem. No filament. Okay. Filament is totally absent. In this case, the anthem, the stamen is to be called as sessile. Okay. The same same word which you are going to use in the uh, petiolate leaf, sessile leaf, pedicellate flower, sessile flower. Here also, the filament, if it is absent, it is to be described as sessile in nature. This kind of stamens are found in aracy members, aroids. Okay. All these colocasia, anthuriums, they belong to aroids. And in this case, the stamens are sessile. The stamens are not characterized by the presence of the filament. That is the speciality of all these aracy family members. All these colocasia. To remember the specific example, you can write the colocasia. Colocasia is an example for the sessile kind of ant. Okay? Let us continue with the other parts of study in the enrichment. Suppose if the sterile anther is sterile in nature, generally the anther is characterized by the presence of microsporangia. The microsporangia internally contains the diploid fertile cells called as microspore mother cells. The microspore mother cells on meiosis, they are going to produce the microspores or they are called as the pollen grains. Suppose if the stamen fails to produce the fertile pollens, in that case we call the stamens as Sterile stem. Okay. Sterile stem, we know the sterility. Sterility due to maybe any maybe due to any kind of reasons. The stamen or the anchor fails to produce the fertile pollens. In that case, we are going to designate or we are going to describe that kind of stamen as sterile stem. There is a word which signifies this feature that is called as stamina. In many cases, it means there is there is cashier is one of the example. Cashia, moringa is drumstick. Drumstick is what is moringa. So they are the examples where we get ten number of stamens are there in cashier. So cashier flower is with ten stamens and moringa is also with ten stamens. And out of these ten stamens, many of the stamens are not capable of producing the pollens. They remain as a small rudimentary kind of stamen there. And in that case, that kind of stamens are to be called as the staminores. Staminore means it is a sterile stamen formed in the cashier flowers and also in case of moringa flower. Moringa is drumstick. Nugeka is called as moringa plant. In many cases, there is a kind of modification. Petanoid stamens. Stamens can be described as petaloid in nature. You know the meaning of petaloid. They are petal like. The stamens, so you have learned the word, similar words. Uh, in case of calyx, if the calyx is other than green color, normal color is green. If it is other than green color, then it is to be described as petaloid kind of sepals. Similarly, if the stamen is like the petal or it is similar to the petal, then it is called as petaloid stamens. Petal like, not with respect to its shape and size. Also, with respect to not only with respect to its shape and size, also with respect to 
its color and com color combination if it is similar or if there is more similarity between the metals of the flower and the stamens then it is to be described as petaloid kind of stamens this is found in two flowers that is called as canna canna is one of the example carpade ornamental plant where the stamens are modified into petal like structures because it is monocotyl adults family we call it as periandra there is one more flower called as lilium lilium is another example where we get the petaloid stamens there in that case also it can be called as staminodium and it fails to because it fails to produce the pollens so then it can be called as petaloid staminodium we can combine the two words the stamens in capital of production of pollen are regarded as staminodes and if the same stamen is colorful and petal like then it can be called as petaloid kind of staminodes are found in both the flowers canna as well as hedicium is the example for it's a gingivalous family member hedicium is a uh, the shrubby or ginger family member and uh, the, these are the two examples for the petaloid condition of the stamens and they are petal like colorful but they don't have for type and the further part of study next part of study the generation is so when you look into the structure the structure of the flower you will get two kinds of stamens depending upon the length of the filament or height of the filament one kind of stamens are called as inserted stamens okay and the second type is called as inserted stamens exerted stamens and inserted stamens when you read the word you can make out exerted the stamens stand outside the flower we can see the stamens directly if you observe if you are observing one flower and in this case draw the flower and let me know what is exerted kind of stamen this is in case of cisanthemia you will get five petals there not petals and all stamens can be seen external okay they come out of the flower so open flower so when it comes out of the flower when you look at the flower directly you can see the stamens because it is exerted it will come out of the flower because of the height of the filament if the filament is very long naturally the stamens will come out of the flower in that case it can be called as exerted kind of stamens okay the stamens which come out of the flower is called as exerted kind of stamens and that can be seen in case of cisanthemia dalonyx can be quoted as the examples for the exerted kind of stamen they will come they are going to come out of the flower inserted kind of stamen so this cannot be seen externally it remains inside the corolla generally this happens in the gamma petal of corolla where in case of datura datura flower it opens but to see the stamens we have to open up the corolla and we can observe the features of the stamen so this remains inside the flower doesn't mean that the filaments are extremely short even in datura flower the filaments are very long but the corolla length is very uh, greater than the length of the filament in case of datura so that the stamen remains inside the corolla tube that is a funnel like corolla inside that the stamen remains and in that case if the stamen remain inside the flower then it is called as inserted you have to open up the flower and you have to study the flower uh, stamen in that case it is inserted by and when you look at the feature of the flower if you can directly see the stamens outside the flower then it is to be called as exerted kind of stamens
For example, in case of staminal corona, we call it as staminal corona. That is found in case of hibiscus. Sorry, calotropis. Calotropis is the example for staminal corona. All of you have seen staminal corona. So, in case of a calotropis flower, you will get this kind of coiled structure in the calotropis flower, right? This kind of coiled structure holding a pentacular disc on the top. Then the corolla and the calyx. And this kind of coiled structure, because internally, if you take a less of the calotropis flower, we will come to know the feature here exactly. The carpels are two in number, connected with the their apocarpus, tiles are also two, and connected with the hardest pentangular disc on the top, that is called stigma. Okay. And on this pentangular disc we find the pollinia there. You will come to know what are the what are the features of this kind of stigma in the further part of study of enrichment. These are the male reproductive parts that is called as pollinia. And here there will be a tube around this style and ovary, it's called as staminal tube. And to the staminal tube, it is having an appendage, a coiled pouch like, chamber like part will be there in this coiled portion, which contains one or two drops of sweet sugary fluid that is called as nectar. And this is called as corona. Okay, extra decorative part of the flower is called as corona. It is an appendage, it is an extra appendage attached to the filament of the stamen in case of calotropis, and that is why it is called as staminal corona. It is not part of the corolla, it is the staminal corona. The similar kind of structure is also found in the flowers of a genus called as pancrasium. Pancrasium is a member of family in Amarylidaceae. Family Amalidae is a member of the pancrasium and this pancrasium is an ornamental plant made up of six tepals, white flower, six tepals which are fused to form this kind of tube and at the base we find the inferior over it is a little like a flower and above this very fine frilled skirt like structure, transparent membranous skirt like part and this is called as corona again because the filament is attached to this corona. It is also staminal corona. The flower appears like this. Okay. The filament of the stamen is attached to this corona and hence it is called as corona, staminal corona that is found in the flowers of pancrasium is the flower in which we find the staminal corona. If you find such kind of things, additional features in the flower that can be also mentioned during the description of a flower. So, that is about the appendages which are attached to, appendages of the filament which are attached to the corolla or to the stamen and then it is called as the staminal corona found in the flowers of Calotropis as well as the pancrasium is the example in which we find the staminal corona because this is not connected with the corolla. Daffodil is also an example. Daffodil flower is also an example for having the similar kind of corona here. It is a part of the stamens and not the part of the corona. Okay. Let us continue with the attachment or the connective based on the connective tissue which is going to connect the two anthelopes together or it is going to separate the two anthelopes together. There are four different types of stamens based on the nature of connective. Connective is, what is connective? The connective is the tissue which is going to cement the two lobes of the anchor in a stamen is called as a connective. Generally the connective is sterile in nature. It is a sterile tissue and it is going to connect the two lobes of the anchor together. It attaches or it holds the two anchor lobes together. So based on the connective there are four different types of stamens. The first type is called as discrete. The second is called as Dimetrate. The third type is called as distractile.
Fourth is called as appendicular. There are four different types of anchors based on the connective, the nature of the connective. Discrete, dilaricate, distractile and appendiculate. Discrete type of stem. Discrete means the connective is very small. Very small patch of connective is present. This is one anchor lobe. So second anchor lobe. Only this much. Okay. Connective becomes a very small patch, very small patch of connective tissue. It is going to hold the two anchors together. And this is the filament of the stamen connected to the pedicel of the flower. Okay. Here, this is a small patch of connective. Very small patch. Extremely tiny patch of connective is going to at only at some delicate point, very small point, the two envelopes are attached together. So, because of the presence of very small patch of connective tissue. This is the filament of the anchor. Okay, then this is the pedicel of the flower. This is found in case of the male flowers of, these are the male flowers of euphorbia. Pulcherima. Euphorbia pulcherima is the local name for Euphorbia pulcherima is Poinsettia. Is the name of the flower. Is the name of the flower where the stamens, each stamen is going to represent one male flower and it is made up of a pedicel, small filament, and discrete kind of anchor because of the small patch of connective tissue. And such kind of anchors are to be called as discrete kind of anchor. Dilaricate is the second type. The dilaricate kind of anchor means the two anchor lobes are slightly separated from each other. It appears like this four group. Right. Okay, the two anchor lobes are slightly separated from each other. They are not together. They are slightly separated because of the fourth grid nature of the connective. This is connective. Okay, it is going to fork up. It is going to branch. And in the forking, it is going to separate the two anchor lobes slightly apart from each other. And in that case, it is to be called as divaricate kind of anchor. And this divaricate kind of anchor is found in the flowers of Telia. Telia is a family member. Telia is an example for divaricate this is the first type. The third type of anchor, distractile, very widely connective. The two anchor nodes are widely separated from each other, very wide. It exhibits a seesaw mechanism during the process of pollination. If this anchor node is pushed, this anchor node will bend downwards. A seesaw mechanism is exhibited by, and the same mechanism is we call it as lever mechanism of pollination, and it is the characteristic feature of Sarnia flower, where the two anchor nodes are widely separated from each other because of widely uh, separating uh, the connective tissue. The connective is very wide between the two anchor nodes, and this is the filament. And this kind of stamen or anchor is to be called as divaricate kind of anchor. The connective is very wide, separating the two lobes apart from each other. One lobe is sterile, another lobe is fertile. You have learned the mechanism of pollination, you know the mechanism of pollination. You just prefer that, you will come to know the salvia is an example for this kind of stamen. Salvia is a MBSA family member and it is an example for this tractile type of anchor. The last kind is what is appendiculate kind of anchor. If the filament extends further beyond the length of the stamen and extends further into a hairy appendage, is the filament, and in the center there will be a connective, you know, the connective tissue, if it extends further like this and ending with a fine hair like feathery kind of extra attachment on the top of the anchor. In that case, it is to be called as appendiculate kind of anchor, where the filament is prolonged further from the top of the anchor, it comes out of the anchor, top of the anchor, and ends with a feathery structure on the top, an appendage, an extra appendage on the top of the anchor. In that case, it is called as appendiculate kind of anchor that is found in 
Sinus, linear and uh, sorry, reniform. These are the five shapes. Okay. The first one, let me begin with the linear type. This is concerned only with the shape of the anchor. Linear, we can make a long. Linear means long. The two anchor lobes, if they are very long, Sinuous kind of anchor 
because in case of cuckoo birds, the flowers are unisexual. The male and female flowers are different. So male flowers are characterized by that kind of stamen, where actual number of stamens are five, but two stamens are completely fused. Second set of two stamens are completely fused. One stamen is also there. All together, it is going to form a solid column in the center of the male flower. So it is called a cymose type of stamen. And cuckoo uh, birds, male flowers are example for that kind of animal. The next is what is reniform, renal, kidney, reni, reniform, renal artery. So this is connected with the kidney shape. If the anther is bean seed like or it is kidney like, this is the shape. Okay. Bean seed like or kidney like in appearance. And this, you know, the most common feature of family Margesi. Entire family Margesi. Just now you have taken an example for monotheca type of anther. It is there. And it is one cell anther because of that we call it as monothecus. This is a ready form. It is bean seed like or it is kidney like in nature. And that shape is called as ready form shape. Okay, got it? There are five shapes of the anthers. Linear, anther lobes are very long, linear in nature, formed in acalypha flower. Sagittate, pointed at the tip and wider at the bottom. It is arrowhead like, formed in the flowers of winter. Rounded, the anther lobes are extremely rounded, pearl like, and which are connected by very small patch of discrete connective, and that means it is to be called as rounded kind of anther. Cyanomas, all five stamens are fused to form a solid column there with the S-like bands over its surface and that is why it is called a cyanose kind of anther. And the last type, it is reniform or because it is bean seed like or it is kidney like and it is having only one cell. Monothecus anther having bean like appearance, bean seed like appearance or it is kidney like in appearance. So it is called a reniform formed in the members of family Margesi. Okay? What the shapes of the anther? There are five different shapes of the anther. Now, the attachment of the filament to the anther. This I need not explain again because I have already explained in the previous videos. There are four different kinds of attachments. Adnate, basic fixed, dorsal fixed and versatile type of attachment. You know, adnate means the connective runs along the height of the two anther lobes, two anthers. There are two anther lobes in the stamen and it may extend further into a sterile root on the top. In that kind of stamen is called as adnate kind of stamen found in the members of Anonesi, Magnoliaceae and Nymphaceae. The second is called as basic fixed kind where the filament is attached to the base of the anther. Accordingly, it is called as basic fixed. Dorsal is a type of connect connection. It is if the filaments are attached on the dorsal side of the anther or on the back side of the anther, it is to be called as dorsal fixed kind of stamen. The versatile is a very special kind where the anther is also long sufficiently and filament is also very weak and slender, long filament. But the filament is attached somewhere at the middle length of the long anther so that the anther can rotate all over 360 degree. It can swing all over 360 degree and hence the stamen is called as versatile. It is a feature of all monocotyledons family where the anemophily kind of pollination is going to take place. Wind is the pollinator among the grass family members or in most of the uh, monocotyledonous plants. And next part of study is what as dehiscence of the anther. That also I have explained the anther part itself. So remember, this is the dehiscence. And again, the dehiscence of the anther, you know, there are three different types again. It's called as longitudinal dehiscence, transverse dehiscence, porous, and one. I have left there in that part of uh, the class that is called as granular. There are four different kinds of dehiscence patterns among the uh, different flowers. Dehiscence pattern of the anther. Dehiscence means breaking up of the anther wall to release the polar grains. Break up. Anther is dry, mature, dry, break up the wall and release the pollen. And that process is called as anthesis or dehiscence. It breaks up and longitudinal you can make out. If the anther is sufficiently long, longitudinal slit is going to develop over the anther wall and the pollens are going to be discharged. And all flowers with long anthers are example for longitudinal dehiscence. The second is what is transverse. This is a speciality of the monothecus kind of anther found in the family Margesi because it is having only one cell. 
So it is going to break open transversely, releasing the pollens into the external environment. So it is called as transverse kind of fragrance. Porous also, it is found in Solanaceae family members, brinjal, tomato, chili. Their mycelis is also example for the same. And in all these cases, the anther is having a pore on the top through the pore that essence is going to take place. So the pollens are going to be discharged from the pore. But valvular is a special case, and the valvular kind of uh, uh, the uh, it is a mechanism of uh, the essence is going to take place in case of cinnamon. Cinnamon is an example for dalchini flower is an example for the valvular kind of arrangement because in case of this uh, kind of stamen, the anther wall is going to open up in the form of a door-like manner. A flap of a piece of anther wall is going to break up and it opens up leaving a window here and through that window the pollens are going to be discharged out. Well that opening is going to happen over the anther wall and that is why it is called as valvular and example is found in case of cinema flower, cinema anthers. That is with respect to the dehiscence of the anther. You just prefer the previous video and add this word there or you can make out now also it is valvular kind of dehiscence. Uh, which is not there in that video. I have explained only three words there is the fourth one. And the attachment of anchor also, I will write here, you just refer the previous video and uh, recollect the memory of all those uh, terminologies there. Attachment, attachment of the filament to the anchor. The first one is adnate, the second is basic fixed, the third is dorsal fixed. And the fourth is versatile. Okay. Refer that video and uh, learn the meaning of all these terminologies again. It is just a repetition. I have given the specific example also. That is with respect to the denizens of the anchor. Okay. The next part of study is number and insertion of stains. With respect to a flower, we, can, we are going to count the number of stamens, number and insertion. This is 
one stamen, here there are two stamens, three stamens, triandrous, four stamens, what is tetrandrous, pentandrous, five stamens, you can write it as here, the members of Solanaceae are example for the flowers having five stamens in one flower and polyandrous, if you contain more than five stamens, if the flower contains more than five stamens and in that case it is to be described as polyandrous in nature. Many stamens, for example, the Marmesi family members. Marmesi family members are characterized by many number of stamens. Anonesi, Magnoliaceae, Nymphaceae are also example for the flowers having many number of stamens. So if the flower is consisting of one stamen, it is monandrous, two stamens triandrous, three stamens triandrous, four tetrandrous, accordingly five polyandrous. If there are more than five number of stamens, then it is to be described as polyandrous in nature. There are many number of stamens. Okay. Then, after counting the number of these floral parts, so if you see that in a flower there are five sepals, five petals, and five stamens. The number of stamens is equal to the number of sepals and petals. That petition of the stamens can be described as isostamenous. Isostamenous condition means there are the number of stamens are equal to the number of sepals and petals. Okay, then. Number of stamens are equivalent to number of petals and stamens. Sorry, petals and sepals. All are in five numbers, all are in six numbers. You can say that it is isostamenous condition. Then the two important words, antisepalous. Anti-sepalus. This is anti-sepalus, opposite to the sepal. But this is alternative. 